So today on Student to Master, I'm interviewing Jim Jordan. Now he is a designer with Arkimoto Electric Vehicles here in Eugene, Oregon. Kind of an interesting story, but I don't want to tell you too much. I'm going to let Jim tell you his story of how he went from student to master. So think back to when you were 15 and where you were at that point and tell us from where you were at 15 to where you are now. Okay. Um, when I was 15, I had a shop class, a metal shop class. And I thought that was the coolest thing that I could learn how to weld and machine and you know, make things and design and build. I, I made myself a little drill press using castings that I made the patterns for in the shop class. And it was just so cool to me to be able to do that. I, I found out that I grew up back in St. Louis. And back in St. Louis, they have a special school district. The special school district takes care of handicapped children and, and things like that. But they also have two technical high schools, now three technical high schools. And uh, I went to North County Tech. So the last two years of high school, I studied machine shop. I learned blueprint reading. I learned, you know, uh, shop math, uh, the, the whole theory of metallurgy and things like that. And then when I got out of school, I had already had two years of training in machine shop. I got a job as uh, in, in a factory uh, running a, a drill press and mills and things like that. I worked my way from that into a tool and die apprenticeship, uh, building Loswax, or building plastic injection molds first. Um, I, that was a union tool and die apprenticeship. I did that, and then uh, about the time I was finished with that, one of the, the men that I was working with was moving out to California. And I had enough of St. Louis by that time. Um, he said, you know, I'm moving out to California. You want to come with us? And I thought about it about 10 seconds and <laughs> said, sure. I'm 21 years old. I'm ready to move. I want to do something different. And so I moved to California. I got out to California and uh, I got a job doing lost wax investment casting, which is a little different than plastic injection molding but uh, very similar, running a machine tool. Uh, at that, that time, it was ma mostly manual machines. Uh, the lost wax mold making was a little, a little bit different because uh, it was more of aluminum based. You'd make a mold out of aluminum, but it was also because some of the, uh, the details that we were putting into these molds were much more complicated. You used a, a different techniques and different tooling to do it, it uh, expanded my repertoire of what I could do. So uh, after that, I worked for another shop that did lost wax investment molding down in, this was down in Southern California. And uh, the guy who owned that shop, after a year or two, decided that he was going to move up to Oregon, to Eugene, Oregon. And he asked me to come up here with him and by that time I'd been in California, Southern California for three years, and I'd had enough Southern California. <laughs> so I said, sure, I'll try it out. So I came up here and I fell in love with Eugene. Um, it's just a nice place to be. I worked for him for about 10 years, uh, got him into building plastic injection molds instead of lost wax molds because there's more money in it long term for the manufacturer if they have a plastic injection machine. With lost wax, you build a lost wax mold for a foundry, you sell that mold to the foundry, and you're done. With plastic injection molding, you get paid to build a plastic injection mold, then you get paid to run that plastic injection mold by making parts for people. So he saw the logic in that. We moved into that realm and he's got a multi-million dollar business running plastic parts for people now. Um, I, I moved on from him to a tool and die shop uh, and worked there for quite a while. You know, that was a, di a little bit different discipline. Uh, I kind of 
kind of enjoy the whole being able to build anything. And so I learned a little bit different dif discipline each time I changed jobs. Uh, I've learned CNC programming. Uh, I've built everything from lost wax investment molds to artificial heart valves. Uh, I've built jet engine parts and refrigerator magnet molds. So it's just been something that I've always been uh, driven to do is to make things, to learn how, how things work, how to build them, how to design and, and create the tooling and the machines. Um, so what, what is your title here at Arkhamoto? Well, I've kind of moved out of the, the hands-on building of things. I'm not a, working as a tool and die maker. I'm working as a designer, mechanical designer. I design the, the front end, the suspension, the, uh, I've designed out of the last six vehicles, I've designed the, the powertrain on three of those uh, and built it because we kind of wear many hats here. Mm -hmm. But uh, to, to take and have a, a blank slate and say, okay, we need to have a powertrain that fits in this space, has this much power from the motors, and transmits it to those wheels, and be able to sit there and design and build that yourself is pretty fun. So kids these days, I guess you don't have technically a degree in engineering. You can no, kind of I do came not have a the... degree in engineering. Okay. I have I have a lot of training. Yeah, I, I mean I've gone on to night school. I've done a lot of things like that. I don't have a an actual degree in uh, engineering, and I have a huge amount of respect for the people who do. Some people don't have the interest. Yeah, okay. they they like getting their hands dirty, but yeah. yet they don't want to do all the extra stuff to get right. to the degree. Right. There are really rewarded, rewarding careers out there in machine trades that can lead to, I mean, I, I don't have an engineering degree, but I'm doing engineering. I'm yeah. getting paid to engineer vehicles. I'm getting paid to design the, the front suspension which and the steering, which is pretty complicated thing. So if, if you could go back to talk to 15 year old Jim, mm -hmm. what would you tell him knowing where you are today? What would you, I mean, would you tell him don't do this or give him advice? You know, I would probably say take that opportunity because I had an opportunity to get some scholarships and go get an engineering degree. And I, I, in a way, I would say, go get that engineering degree to myself, but because of any change that I've made in the past, if, if I had changed anything, I wouldn't be where I am today, I'd be really kind of reluctant to do that. Mm -hmm. The rea reality of it is, if you have the, the talent or the twisted sense of engineering that you need to do engineering, you're going to do it. And, you know, if you can, it makes it a lot easier if you have the education. Yeah. It really does. If I was starting out now, go get your engineering degree, go get a job and work, not as an engineer, but work as a mechanical person or do it as you're going to school. But get that hands-on, get that, that, that the, the hand-eye coordination, the, the muscle memory in your brain of how things go together, how things work, you know, is this going to be strong enough, you know, because calculations will tell you a lot, but having that gut sense too makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So where, where do you see your job or the industry of engineering going in the next 20 years? I think there's going to be some really big, interesting changes. We're never going to get completely away from gasoline motors. Uh, gasoline has a, a, has a extremely power dense and until we can build batteries like phasers from Star Trek, you know, we're always going to need, we're going to need it. Uh, we've got to design and build and create new technologies that engineering is going to be one, on the forefront of that. I mean, it really is. The computers will do things. Computers are just a tool. They will make things easier on you. They'll also make things more difficult, but 
the, the true creativity, the true uh, soul of a product or a machine or a tool, or even something as simple as a pocket knife, comes from the designer first. You know, I would definitely recommend going into engineering or anything, you know, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, optical engineering, learning how to make telescopes and, and you know, all, of the, all the little lasers and computers and all of these things are all depend on optical pieces and they all depend, everything you touch, everything you touch every day has been built and created by somebody who built molds or build dies or build tools. It's kind of one of those, those forgotten things that's happening every day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get the same, doesn't have the same cachet as being a doctor or a lawyer or a, a stockbroker, but the rewards are there. It boils down to, if you want to do something, just do it. All right, so that was Jim Jordan telling you about his story and what he has for the next generations. If you have a story you'd like to tell and want to get in touch with me, we could always do it via phone, via maybe Facebook Messenger for a video or Skype, or even in person like I was with Jim recently. You just got to contact me. So get in touch with me on my About page, and that is it for this time for this month's Student to Master. We'll see you next month.